Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn how to calculate limiting reactants. And before we learn how to calculate limiting reactants, here's a little disclaimer for you. It says that prior knowledge of the topics listed below are necessary before watching this video. So before watching this video, you need to make sure that you understand how to calculate the molar masses of different compounds. You need to make sure that you understand how to balance chemical equations. And you need to make sure that you know how to perform mass mass stoichiometry. And so I recommend that you refer to uh, the three videos that I made on this before you start watching how to calculate limiting reactants. So let's jump right in here and look at an example here. Let's suppose we're gonna have a barbecue, right? And we're gonna make some cheeseburgers, right? And so we have a list of ingredients here to make our cheeseburgers. We have 15 buns, we have 23 leaves of lettuce, 30 slices of cheese, 50 slices of pickles, six patties, and 75 packets of condiments. And what we wanna do is we wanna make some cheeseburgers. We're gonna grill up and barbecue some cheeseburgers. So the question here is how many cheeseburgers can be made from the following ingredients? So out of all these ingredients here, how many cheeseburgers can we make over here? Well, to answer that question, we have to take a look at our ingredients here. And we'll notice that the maximum number of cheeseburgers that we can make is six cheeseburgers. Now, why is that? Well, if we take a look at our ingredients, we'll notice that we only have six patties. And once we, ran out of, once we run out of hamburger patties, we can no longer make any more cheeseburgers. So the maximum number of cheeseburgers that we can make here is six. Because if we take a look at our ingredients or our reactants, if we think of this cheeseburger making process as a chemical reaction, then once these six patties run out, we can't make any more than six cheeseburgers. So in this example right here, the six patties would be our limiting reactant, our limiting reactant. And in chemistry, a limiting reactant is the reactant that runs out first in a chemical reaction and limits the amount of product that can be produced. Okay, so if we, print, if we pretend that these are the reactants and these are the products here, and here are your reactants right here, then the, the, the hamburger patties will be your limiting reactant. It's going to limit you to only six cheeseburgers over here. And once the hamburger patties run out, you can't make any more cheeseburgers. And you're going to have all the leftover reactants left over, unconsumed. They didn't react. They'll just be left over. So in this example, uh, just think of the cheeseburger making process. You have reactants producing products over here. And what we're going to do is we are going to carry this example over into chemistry and chemical reactions and we're going to learn how to calculate limiting reactants and learn how to spot which of the reactants is in fact limiting in other words which one runs out first in a chemical reaction so let's jump right in and take a look at a couple of examples okay so it says right here that a limiting reactant once again is the reactant that runs out first during a chemical reaction thereby limiting the amount of product that can be formed okay so if we take a look at this chemical equation right here it's telling us that potassium reacts with aluminum oxide to produce aluminum and potassium oxide and the question here says that in the reaction below we have 55 grams of potassium reacting with 55 grams of aluminum oxide we want to know what mass of aluminum will be produced and which reactant is limiting. So there's a lot going on here, but let's break it down. It tells us we have 55 grams of potassium. So we're starting with 55 grams of this stuff and we have 55 grams of aluminum oxide and we have 55 grams of this stuff right here. We want to know how many grams of aluminum uh, will be produced if these two amounts mix together and react with one another and also we want to know which of these two reactants here is the limiting reactant which one is going to run out first in the chemical equation or chemical reaction so the very first thing that we have to do is balance our chemical equation so let's go ahead and balance this chemical equation and so our chemical equation is now balanced and so what we have to do is we have to set up two stoichiometry problems we first need to figure out how much aluminum aluminum will be produced from 55 grams of potassium and then we're going to have to have figure out how many grams of uh, aluminum will be produced from 55 grams of aluminum oxide so let's go ahead and start now in this problem we have 55 grams of potassium and we have 55 grams of aluminum oxide 
And so what we want to do with each one of these is we're going to run each one of these through the stoichiometry process and, and calculate how many grams of aluminum will be produced. So let's start with this first one here. First thing we're going to do whenever we know the mass in grams of substance A, and we want to figure out the mass in grams of substance B, is to divide by the molar mass. So we know that one mole from the periodic table, one mole of potassium is 39.10 grams of potassium. And when we work on stoichiometry problems, you always want to have your calculator and periodic table of elements out. And we're getting this number right here from your periodic table of elements underneath potassium. That's the molar mass of potassium. Our next step, that's going to bring us to right here, to moles. Our next step is to multiply by the mole ratio. That will allow us to go from the moles of known substance to moles of unknown substance. So if we take a look, our mole ratio is 2 moles of aluminum to 6 moles of potassium from our balanced chemical equation. So 2 moles of aluminum to 6 moles of potassium. And then in our last step, we want to convert the moles of the unknown substance to grams. So we have to multiply by the molar mass of aluminum from your periodic table. It tells you it's 26.98 grams. Per mole. And so we'll put this in our calculator and we'll end up getting 13 grams of aluminum. This will cancel with this. Moles cancels with moles of potassium. Moles of aluminum cancels with moles of aluminum, leaving you with grams of aluminum. But that is not our final answer. We now need to do the same process with our aluminum oxide, our aluminum oxide, Al2O3. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing we're going to do here is convert the mass to moles. So we know that one mole of aluminum oxide has a mass of 101.96 grams. From our periodic table, we took three oxygens, the mass of three oxygens, and the mass of two aluminums and added them together. In our next step here, if we take a look now, our mole ratio is two moles of aluminum to one mole of aluminum oxide. So we have two moles of aluminum to one mole of aluminum oxide. And in our last step, what we now need to do is we now need to figure out the mass in grams of the unknown substance by multiplying by the molar mass of aluminum, which is 26.98 grams per mole. So we'll get our calculator out and we end up with 29 grams, keeping in mind significant figures. We have two sig figs here, two sig figs here, two sig figs here. All these are unlimited, so we must have two sig figs in our uh, final answer. So if we have 55 grams of this, reacting with 55 grams of this, how many grams of aluminum will be produced? Is it this much right here or is it this much right here? Well, we are always going to go with the lowest amount, the lowest amount of these two answers will be the maximum amount of aluminum that can be produced and which of the two reactants is limiting well if we take a look here it's our potassium right it's the potassium we did the stoichiometry problem or process and got this answer for our potassium so once the 55 grams of aluminum i'm sorry of potassium runs out it's not going to produce we cannot produce any more than 13 grams of aluminum because there's not going to be any more potassium. So the limiting reactant here, the limiting reactant is going to be your potassium. Once this runs out, we cannot produce any more than 13 grams of this aluminum over here. So that's how we calculated the limiting reactant, and that is how we figured out how much of aluminum can be produced. Let's take a look at another example. In this example here, it says, in the reaction below, if 3.5 moles of barium chloride reacts with 5.6 moles of sodium sulfate, then how many moles of sodium chloride will be produced and which reactant is limiting? So we have to figure out two things here, right? We have to figure out how many moles of sodium chloride will be produced if we have 3.5 moles of this and 5.6 moles of this stuff right here 
And then secondly, we have to figure out which of these two reactants is going to run out first in the chemical reaction. In other words, which reactant is limiting. So first thing that we have to do is balance our chemical equation. It is now balanced. And so the starting stuff is 3.5 moles of BACL2 and we have 5.6 moles of Na2SO4. So let's work on this one first. We need to figure out how many moles of sodium chloride will be produced if we have three and a half moles of barium chloride. So anytime the known substance is in moles and you're trying to figure out the moles of something else, it's simple. We're just going to multiply by our mole ratio. So our mole ratio, we're comparing the stuff we're trying to find or unknown substance to the known substance in our balanced chemical equation. It's telling us that two moles of NaCl for every one mole of BaCl2, there's an imaginary one here, right? Put this in our calculator and we will get 7.0 moles of NaCl. We have two sig figs here, so our answer must have two sig figs. So now let's do that same process with the moles of Na2SO4. We know the number of moles of substance A. We want to figure out the number of moles of substance B. So we're simply going to multiply by our mole ratio. We're comparing NaCl to Na2SO4 now. And in our balanced chemical equation, this is telling us that two moles of NaCl will be produced for every one mole of Na2SO4. Every one mole of Na2SO4. So we'll put this in our calculator, and it looks like if we use the correct number of sig figs, we'll end up with an answer of 11 moles. So... How many moles of NaCl will be produced if we have 3.5 moles of this and 5.6 and moles of this? Is it 7 moles of NaCl or 11 moles of NaCl? Well, we're going to go with our lowest answer, 7 moles, right? 7 moles because once this BaCl2 runs out, you can't make any more than 7 moles of NaCl. There's no more barium chloride to react. It's all been consumed in the chemical reaction. So which of these two reactants is limiting? It's going to be your BACL2. So our limiting reactant in this problem is going to be our barium chloride, our BACL2. This is the stuff that is going to run out first in our chemical reaction and limit the amount of sodium chloride that can be produced. All right, so there's two examples of some limiting reactant for you. What I recommend at this point in time is that you pause the video and try these out on your own. Take 10 or 15 minutes to try these out on your own. You have 75 grams of uh, iron 3 chloride reacting with 125 grams of magnesium oxide. How many grams of iron 3 oxide will be produced? You're going to put that answer here and you're going to tell me which of the two reactants is limiting. Put that one right here. In other words, which one will run out first in the chemical reaction? And I'm going to give you guys the answers right about now. So how did you guys do? Did you get them all right? If so, then you're pretty good at uh, calculating limiting reactants and determining which reactant will run out first in a chemical reaction. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that's going to subscribe you to my channel. And please feel free to leave any comments or questions down in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.